Hi everyone, so welcome back to another fireside chat with us today here at HubSpot. Today we'll be covering the topic about finding the graduate job, meaning finding the graduate job that suits you. And we'll be covering different topics regarding what job site to use, how to start your job hunting process, for example, and many more. And joining me today is my lovely HubSpotters, RS, Taya, and Connor. Uh, RS and uh, Connor have a business graduate background, and Taya is also a business graduate, but is a recruiter here at HubSpot, and they will be sharing different perspectives from their end as well, and any tips and tricks that will be helpful for you. So hi, everyone. Uh, do you mind just sharing a bit about yourself? Uh, quickly share about your background, where you came from as well, and your current role at HubSpot. Uh, RS, you can start off. Sure. Hi all. Ni ni nice to see and, and, and meet you. My name is Orest. I am a UCD master's graduate here based in Dublin. I'm originally from Ukraine and I came to, to Ireland to do my master's studies on SAMS program in international management. And after my studies, I found a job here at HubSpot and currently I work in sales on business development role. And I work with companies in the United Kingdom and Ireland. Uh, hello, folks. My name is Connor. Um, I'm from Granard County, Longford. Uh, for those who don't know, it's a little small town in the Midlands of Ireland. Um, I studied marketing in National College of Ireland in Dublin, uh, and I only graduated last year. And from there, I began working in HubSpot as an inbound success coach. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Taisia Putova. I um, am a recruiter here at HubSpot and I graduated actually in linguistics and foreign languages, my bachelor degree, and then I did a master's degree in um, Humboldt University in Berlin uh, in cultural studies. Nice. So thanks everyone uh, for sharing a bit about yourself. And HubSpot is a hybrid company that allows their employees to work flex, uh, work 100% from home remotely or in office. I, for example, I'm a 100% remote employee working from Munich, but I'm curious uh, where everyone is. Well, you, we know where you're joining us from today, but which work option did you choose and why is the reason you chose that? Uh, Taya, you want to kick off? Yeah, sure. So um, I've been at HubSpot now for two years and uh, what I appreciate is that HubSpot sends um, this uh, uh, yeah, like questionnaires every year, end of the year, where you can choose your contract time uh, type for the next year. So my first year at HubSpot, I was on a flex contract. It means that I could go two, three times a week to the Berlin office where I'm based in Berlin and meet people and enjoy like the facilities at the office. And for the second year, I actually chose to be a remote employee just because it was uh, my personal situation. My boyfriend uh, found a job in the south of Germany. So now I travel a lot to the south of Germany and I'm really happy that HubSpot allows me also to, uh, you know, like to uh, change uh, my contract type and uh, enjoy uh, all the perks of being a remote employee. I still can go to the office. It's not uh, prohibited. It's just, it's like not uh, supposed to be every week. And also I have some budget for remote employees to use to meet up with people in the region. Connor, you wanna continue? Yeah, of course. Um, so I'm actually fully flexible. Um, I'll often do two or three days work in the office, but uh, it kind of just gives me um, an open kind of feel to do what suits for me most weeks. Um, for example, like it's super easy for me on the case that um, where I'm actually based right now, I'm in Longford, so it's about two hours away from uh, Dublin, and I kind of decided late Monday evening that I come here, and it wasn't a problem. I didn't need to get any uh, clearance to come here or anything like that, so it's uh, super, super flexible. Um, and as well, I can go into the office anytime I feel. Um, the Dublin office is an absolutely amazing facility. Um, so yeah, it's super, super um, flexible. Now uh, they'll pass it over doors. Here's Connor. Yeah, I'm at office based employee, and I chose this option because the office here in Ireland in, in in Dublin is amazing. And for me, it's very important because I work in sales to interact every day with my colleagues from sales to to have some chats to see what's working best, and it really helps to succeed at this job. 
but today I'm working from home and it's nice to have that flexibility that HubSpot allows us, even like office-based employees to have. And the reason for that is because I'm having in two hours a uh, fire inspection. The inspector is coming to check the apartment, so I had to stay at home to, to meet and greet him. So it's nice to, to combine that flexibility with, with this job. Definitely. I, I definitely love the flexibility, especially like with doctor's appointment and also anything personal that you have to attend to as well. And that you can always like shut off for one or two hours and uh, your colleagues will be completely acceptable on that and don't bother you during this time as well. So RS, you touched a bit about like working with colleagues in sales and things about that as well. Do you want to explain or like does everyone want to explain a bit about what your day to day entails in the roles uh, that you are doing at AppSpot? Yeah, sure, I can start. So for me, um, my, my main tasks as a business development representative is to source for prospects and companies that might benefit from using HubSpot. So I usually start with looking for new companies in my capacity to reach out to and start working with them. I'm checking out LinkedIn daily to looking for updates and what's happening there, as well as our reactive stuff, basically, people that are coming and checking out content on HubSpot or people that are requesting help. So I'm going through that and that's how my day starts. Then there is lots of calls, lots of emails, lots of LinkedIn outreach, personalized videos, and just talking with people through the entire day, learning about their businesses, learning about their goals, priorities, and requirements to understand if HubSpot is the right fit for them, if we can help them to grow better. And that's how it goes mainly. Connor, you want to continue? Yeah. Um, so uh, today I've been inbound success coach, so I will be qualifying leads on a daily basis. Um, kind of the opposite, I'd nearly said, Oris, as he's mainly outbound, all of my work will be inbound. Um, so potential prospects will come into HubSpot via chat rooms um, and calls, and they'll be sometimes they're asking for maybe a technical issue or something like that. Um, we'll always try and turn that around and see the opportunity to be um, a sale or a customer for HubSpot. So um, in my case, it might be asking the right questions and pushing them in the right direction. Um, and then you'll also have to do a lot of uh, investigation into maybe their website to see if they're a good fit for HubSpot, if we can see a problem that we can provide a solution to. Um, so yeah, there's uh, a lot of that there. And we also work in a lot of teams as well um, within the, the Inbound Success team. Um, to do different projects as well. So it's quite fun as well. We get a mix of everything going there. So for me as a recruiter, many people uh, know that uh, what we do on a daily basis is reviewing applications and uh, having interviews with people, understanding their motivation, uh, their interest in the position, their qualifications and skills. And, um, uh, but not... Uh, everyone knows that we do a lot of work also in terms of uh, working with hiring managers, training uh, teams on interviewing on uh, different aspects like identifying the skills, asking the right questions, avoiding biases and um, yeah, more administrative tasks as well as um, you know, con creating contracts, negotiating terms. Um, helping uh, on legal aspects uh, if customers need like visas, relocation, and any other support. And uh, also, I like this more like creative part of my job where we can also do in <laughs> events like that and uh, do branding activities, employer branding, and tell about HubSpot and uh, yeah, how it is to work with us. Nice, cool. Very different job perspective as well. And also, like, I remember you guys were saying, like, what your degree was and what you currently landed in now in, uh, in a job uh, that is totally, well, kind of different from your degrees as well. So how would you recommend starting the job hunting process? Uh, Corner, you can kick us off. Um, I think uh, just kind of have a more open mind as well. Um, like, I would have never seen myself uh, working in sales. Uh, I studied marketing, always thought I'd work in branding or something along those lines. Um, but now that I am working in sales, I'm very, very happy. Um, one of the things that I've seen that like carried over quite well is some of the skills. So I think uh, as well with HubSpot, especially in the recruitment, it's a lot of skill-based. Um, 
activities are a lot of skill based um, criteria. Um, so I'm just going to say be open minded, do your bit of research on what you could potentially do as opposed to what the kind of the narrow minded uh, options are. But yeah, I think that's the, the best way to look at it. I'm going to pass it over to whoever's next there. I loved how you said, Connor, about keeping the open mind. I think that's a great approach, and I totally agree on the research part. Uh, it helped me a lot when I was looking for a job. So during my master's studies, I was thinking about, okay, what's what's next? What do I want to do next? And I took a lot of time to reflect on my past experience, and I also spoke with my friends and, and colleagues and university careers um, platforms that we had, and these chats really helped me to understand that, all right, sales is a go-to thing for me. I see myself there. I love target-driven environment. I love the accountability part. I love that there is a huge career growth opportunities. So I understood that sales in tech is going to be something that I would like to pursue after university. And after that, I narrowed down to companies that, that I wanted to apply to and work for. And I had like Excel spreadsheet with my, my companies there, roles there. And I'm not going to lie, HubSpot was the first priority. Yeah, I can even pop up this file right now and, and, and show you guys. But yeah, that, that's what helped me. Yeah, I, I can only like agree with the guys uh, what they said. Um, yeah, just reflecting on your personality, on your skills, on your background, your strengths um, and um, your previous experience, what you enjoyed the most about what you've done. Um, yeah, for me personally, it was always, yeah, I've been interested in people, working with people. I knew that I wanted a job where I could interact with people on a daily basis that's what I'm passionate about. I have energy for that. I have excitement, enthusiasm for that. So um, definitely uh, I was looking for a job connected with that. Um, and um, yeah, also being strategic and um, research, put effort into research. Um, that's important. Like, for example, it could be just making a list of companies you want. Also always I recommend interviewing people uh, just ask people around you, like friends of your family, what their jobs are, what they're doing, uh, what they're enjoying, what the challenges are in their jobs. And um, yeah, network with people. Um, yeah, to understand better. Also, just watching, like, I think now lots of information is on YouTube. You can watch about different professions and explore more from people firsthand, even those you don't know. Nice. Thanks, guys. And uh, Aris, you touched a bit about platforms. So uh, does, does everyone use like any sites when they were applying back then for jobs? Or Aris, maybe uh, you can start with like recommendation and then the other team members also have like other recommendation when it comes to sites to apply for jobs if they don't know, like, if students don't know many companies out there at the moment. Yeah, so for the research part, I used LinkedIn a lot. Um, I also checked um, past graduates like alumni from my university working companies that I wanted that I was interested in and I reached out to them and usually like 90% of the time everyone is super helpful because they've been in in your shoes in graduate shoes before so they know how it is and and people are really really help so you just have to ask be polite and then you 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 shall receive and then Glassdoor helped me a lot so basically checking the reviews of people about the companies, I definitely recommend that, that platform. And um, UCD, for, for graduates that are um, studying at UCD, there is a fantastic career platform there uh, with lots of support, lots of coaching, resources, materials, and also job postings as well. So for example, in my program, we, have our, we had our dedicated portal, Sam's Careers. So for some students out there, it's also going to be helpful to check out what, what's happening there. And yeah, this was the main, main platforms that I used that helped me. And then after like kind of narrowing down my search, I went to directly the job portal of each company and was doing my, my research there. Okay. Connor, what is your perspective? Yeah, I'd nearly be mir mirroring Norris there. I think uh, that'd be kind of the go-to for a lot of uh, college uh, students coming up. Um, 
I think as well, like I'd really heavily push LinkedIn. Um, I think I had a bit of a different um, recruitment than most because I was quite fortunate that I was doing uh, my final year college project where we actually had to launch a business. So I was doing a portfolio piece to share on LinkedIn and became more active then or there. And that's um, where a friend of mine who actually works in HubSpot, he seen that and referred me to HubSpot, kind of said, um, I see the work you're doing. I think HubSpot needs more young people. Um, you know, people like going forward and the work you're kind of doing applies a lot to what we do in HubSpot. So I'd say like really push on LinkedIn because you can share like a great portfolio um, of what you are and what your work is. Um, I think a lot of people kind of brush it off as just your work experience, but I think any kind of project, um, there's so many applicable skills as well that would really, really help there. Yeah, as a recruiter, I can also confirm the power of LinkedIn. And um, you you can also get approached by recruiters uh, if you put effort uh, into your LinkedIn profile. If you, uh, you know, uh, add the project, you participated some keywords, just maybe watch like a video or research about how to uh, make a like powerful uh, LinkedIn profile and um, also you can open yourself for opportunities so that uh, recruiters on the back end will find your profile easier uh, when they're searching and um, yeah uh, like multiply your reach um, maybe register on multiple student platforms because they are free for students in many cases and uh, it doesn't hurt just to be registered on, on a variety of them um and uh maybe follow the companies you like on social media they sometimes would uh, post some useful information which would help help you to prepare and also like about new openings follow some newsletters if the company uh has newsletters we do <laughs> and um yeah uh maybe follow also some communities like on your in based on your interest on uh social media on discord um tiktok whatever whatever is your pl platform of choice nice cool i think that's a very good perspective as well since a lot of people use a lot of different platforms uh like social media nowadays that like discord is also like a great place to, like start listening to like different uh reviews or like uh talks that people have on there as well um and yeah so linkedin everyone that's listening right now linkedin go go see how to create a great profile uh we have a video on youtube as well about how to optimize linkedin to build out your personal brand there um, and talking about uh, talking about building out personal brands how can people stand out especially if they don't have like prior experience like maybe they have just one internship but are competing quite a lot with like people who have like past a lot of like past experiences uh, and built out their profile already maybe Taya you can start off with the recruiter's perspective and then uh, RS and Connor can give their business uh, business student perspective views um, how to stand out in with your CV or like application or yeah so like for application probably. process yeah yeah so um, I would say try to tailor your CV to the prof like to the job profile read carefully the job description and try to include the most relevant information in the CV so you don't need to list like all every single experience you had since like primary school but um maybe just uh something what is especially relevant for this job opening if it's in marketing then amplify something you've done in that regard and maybe even with your like hobbies your page you are running for yourself um yeah I I am a fan of cover letters as well. I know that some companies wouldn't read them, but still it's worth uh, making like unique tailored uh, cover letter. And nowadays it's much easier because you can use like chat GPT to help you with that and other technologies. Um, and uh, just don't make it like too uh, like basic uh, without even changing the company name sometimes. Um this would be like main tips, but also, yeah, not network, ask people from that company um, what is, uh, yeah, what their experience is, maybe ask to refer you. Um, yeah, research uh, that company as well. well yeah, uh, try to stand out in that way that you uh, know some information about the company and maybe about their culture. 
Connor, maybe you you have uh, some extra perspective, especially you got referred. Uh, yeah, I think so. Like, um, I definitely wouldn't have had like any kind of corporate experience like that. I would have had a lot of work experience that I was able to kind of um apply and talk about. But I think if you're coming from a place where you've no experience, I think one of the great things about HubSpot is it's a super super personable company. Um, the actual company values are a huge part of your day to day. Um, I feel in just how you kind of work, how you live. Um, but I think to showcase in an interview or even when you're you're applying, I think being able to show that you are someone that has real intent to like improve, to learn. Um, I think stuff like the hard method, the star method, uh, which you'll find on the HubSpot websites. Um, I think they're really good learnings to do or to prepare for any of the meetings. So I think like showing a lot of your personal positives, um, whether that just be your hard work and like kind of eth ethic and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I think the personal side of it is a big one on HubSpot. Yes, I can I can only agree with these guys here, with, with Connor and Taya. Uh, so focus on your strengths. Just just showcase them properly. And even if you don't have any job experience, any prior to, to your application at HubSpot, focus on university projects that you had or some team works, group works. Focus on situations where you showed your leadership qualities or where you were able to bring the team together and push or twist something and change it. And what was your action there and what result it achieved? So I believe, uh, preparing to, to your interviews, preparing your CV and thinking about that. And as Guy said, researching the company, understanding what they are looking for in their employees and then showing that you can do that will, will be helpful. Well, definitely great tips all around. And I think that's a definitely good point that you have RS because a lot of students tend to neglect the project work that they did and think that companies are not interested in that. So definitely like do use that in your CV or in your cover letter as well, if you would like to write one and highlight like what RS said, if you did like, if you were the leader of the group or like if uh, you guys came up with like a new business model or a business case um, as well, like Connor did uh, in one of his, in his project work uh, that stood out uh, uh, to the to the friend that was at HubSpot. So yeah, the, those are definitely things that you could do as well in your CV if you have like just one internship or no experience at all. Um, so speaking of like uh, coming straight from university and like not knowing in which direction you want to go, what would you recommend as like the go to start a uh, job for somebody to start into like kind of experience uh, what what suits them at the end of the day? Um, Taya, you want to go? Yeah, I can be a little bit biased because I'm working uh, supporting sales and business development departments. But um, yeah, I would definitely say these jobs of uh, business developer, inbound success coach um, uh, are a great start. Um, if you've gathered some experience, if you had already some outbound experience, BDR role could be um, the the good choice uh, for inbound success coach, I would say like it's even better start if you are still like looking like, do you want to continue career in sales? Do you want like to um, maybe get more like technical path uh, in the future? So yeah, these are good uh, opportunities at HubSpot. Uh, I couldn't speak for other companies that could be like different uh, type of opportunities they offer, but um, in sales departments and business development, these are the perfect start. Or even if you're changing from some other industry uh, with some transferable experience, you can also make a case and start in those roles. Connor, maybe you have a perspective saying that uh, you wanted to do like branding at the beginning, right? <laughs> Yeah, um, so I'm probably going to be biased in this case because uh, it's what I know, but I think the ISC role is great, the inbound success coach. Um, like definitely not what I kind of see myself going into, but I think what's great about being an ISC is you get a, a touch of everything. So there's nearly a touch of kind of customer success. There's touches of sales. Um, so like if I was to really lean into the sales aspects, I'd probably go down the BDO role where Oris is at the moment. But I think what's really good about the... ISC is like I began in HubSpot in August 
um, and I've already went to level two. Um, now kind of looking at the roadmap to go to um, senior ISC. So there's a clear roadmap in the actual position itself, but I think it gives you a really, really good foundation of skills that will kind of transcribe over to other areas. Um, while also it's a good area that I feel like you can network a lot and you can ask a lot of people in the company, um, hey, what do you do? I'd love to know more about your role. Um, and there's lots of really good opportunities there to kind of grow and go further in the company. Um, so pass the doors. Nice. So I, I, I like that corner. So you have to find something that resonates with you. Probably there is no just one peel, I mean, one job that will help you with everything. So for me, uh, I've been selling on marketplaces since I was 13, like a bunch of old family stuff and, and things like that. So when I was 17 and I started looking for a job, sales was the easiest and just it just was, was right for me. So that's why I went and worked in retail. If we are speaking about HubSpot and the job to start here to learn about everything and all aspects of business, I, I totally agree with, with, with Ty and Connor that PDR, ISC, and basically sales role here would be an ideal start because you, first of all, are able to learn about the product that we sell. And then you are able to learn about the businesses that we work with and then about the company overall and you work with marketing department you also get pieces of advice from from our engineers team and it's a great combination of of everything it's, it's really and then you're also developing very versatile skills that would be useful everywhere so that's that's my recommendation here yeah, definitely agree with all of you guys as well, because like you you get to see the business in a 360 view as well, instead of like uh, like in marketing, you start off seeing like in just one view. Um, and like it's if if you're very unsure and like you you don't want to jump straight into sales straight away, do like what Connor mentioned, like reach out to people on LinkedIn and ask what they do in their in their jobs as well. And also like Taya mentioned a bit, YouTube has a lot of content on like what people do in their day to day already. So you can like listen in, see see if this is something for you, see, see if this is uh, something that resonates with you. And yeah, trial and error. You're never too old to try try something new again or change careers as well. Um, and I think we touched this about on this like uh, a little bit at the beginning uh, because you guys also introduced what your your studies were. But um, this is sometimes a controversial topic. But does your degree need to match the job industry? <laughs> Connor, you can start off being a marketing uh, major. Uh, definitely not. I think in my last year I did one. Uh, I think it was my last year I did one sales module, um, and a lot of that did carry over. But like it wasn't the big focus of my degree um so definitely not i think like uh or so probably agree that i think skills is a big thing i think you can pick up a lot of skills from what you learned especially those kind of group projects anything like that i think that's the stuff that will carry over um but yeah definitely uh, it doesn't need to be in the same um same area i i agree connor on the soft skills part but I believe that definitely if your degree matches your job, it's, it's helpful because you spend lots of time studying and, you know, studying theory, doing some practice work before. So it's, it's, it's definitely helpful. But um, I met lots of great people uh, at HubSpot where their degrees don't match what they are doing at the job and they are fantastic at their jobs. So it's definitely beneficial, but it's not a must. Yeah, agreed. So in our day and age, I think we have so much access to information, to so much um, learning you can do online uh, about any topic. And I know like enthusiastic people who have keen interest in something and they can learn it uh, independently. But um, yeah, this like studies framework, it also um yeah traditional way of learning things and it does bring benefit obviously uh studies do provide benefits so uh, i think a degree is helpful but you could be that person who like wants to work in a different area after gaining some degree or 
um, you combine both or you don't have a degree, which is also absolutely fine, but you learn by yourself. Yeah, definitely agree on the last part there as well, because we also uh, accept people without degrees because some people can't afford uh, a university uh, education as well. Um, so don't feel pressured that like a degree is necessary. Like Taya mentioned, there are a lot of online pro programs nowadays as well. Like we have HubSpot Academy where we have like different um, coursework on like sales, marketing and so on that you can definitely take. And these are things that you can again add into your CV if you feel like uh, you are majoring in finance but want to do a bit of marketing. You can definitely do take like this extra um, academy or course and just put it in your CV. Then the recruiter, uh, I think Taya, you can agree with me, can see that there's a relation uh, there to why you're applying to a mar uh, marketing role if your uh, de degree is in finance. Um, yeah, so we are kind of like a SME corporate company now, I would say, because we've grown quite big from when we were back in 2006. And uh, online nowadays, on like TikTok and things like that, there's a lot of like bad stigma going on regarding corporate jobs. And a lot of people like, um, talk about like the negative parts about working for their employer. Um, what are, maybe do you have like advice of, for those who are afraid to enter into like this, what they think is a nine to five uh, kind of job uh, and maybe some advice to like come out of this back stigma that they have from social media. Um, Aris, you wanna start? Mm -hmm. I would say definitely give it a go, see for yourself because it's it's hard to understand if you are a super entrepreneurial person and you have those amazing ideas right um it's, it's amazing to start working for yourself for example as well but for others they they want to be a part of a big machine like hubspot for example and contribute to that one and grow there within that 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 big company i I don't know if I'm the best person to to advise on on nine to fives because in my life I've been mainly working nine to five, so for me there are, there is no stigma about that and and as we said HubSpot is quite flexible as well on that side with with our work policy. I don't know maybe Connor and Taya would would give more uh, let's say better advice on on, on that part. Can I go next? Um, yeah, I I would say uh, I didn't know there was a stigma about working for corporate companies. I think um, uh, I, I personally find it uh, really useful to be part of like a bigger company um, because you can get so much knowledge, so much, um, you know, best practices from working in a big company. There are benefits of working in a small company as well. You try different hats, you uh, yeah, get to know like a little bit of everything. Um, I would say various in a bigger company, your realm of responsibilities would be a little bit narrow, but then you can learn from professionals in other departments. Uh, and, um, yeah, you can like best in class, um, type of, um, um, yeah, uh, work exposure, um, and HubSpot. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's a typical corporate company. Um, I, I don't know how it is in other corporate companies, but I think HubSpot is, uh, provides like a lot of flexibility, maybe even more than in smaller companies. We also are so free to come up with our initiatives, run our own projects. Um, yeah, because just for the sheer size of the company, some things like admin wise could be still kind of more corporate. But I like that HubSpot uh, management leadership, they listen in for feedback. They're always trying like, to improve on that and to make it as easy as possible to do our day to day work. Yeah, so just on my end, and um, I know, of course, you said that you're used to the nine to five. I think I would have been like from a totally different background there. Like I would work like shift work, night, late nights, and stuff like that. So the nine to five to me was always very desirable. Um, and I like, think it's great, just like out of general routine. But I think, um, I think it, there's a lot to be said for the the flexibility of HubSpot. Like just that, as we touched on before, being able to work from home, being able to work from the office. 
Um, but I think there's a lot of flexibility in your day in most roles as well. Um, I think you can dictate um, how you run your day, which I think is a very unique thing as well. Um, obviously, you'll have mandatory things to get done, but um, how you do them can be very in your own way. Um, yeah, and I think as well, like on the corporate sense, I think HubSpot will be very different from other companies. I, I'm not speaking from experience, but I do think uh, HubSpot really do um, push their values and I think they really showcase them as well. Um, and I think that feeds into a lot of your day to day as well. So, um, from my end, it would be a very, very positive experience there. Yes. And I totally agree with you, Connor, as well, because like I have, or most of my team members are based in the U- US. So sometimes I have later nights, and the flexibility there is I can start later the next day to kind of even out as well. And like since HubSpot put a lot of value on work life balance for them, it's like most important thing is that you get you get your job done and you get you reach your targets and your numbers, and uh, you can then structure your day however you like, as you mentioned. So definitely uh, love the flexibility here at HubSpot. And uh, yeah, it depends on companies like everyone mentioned here. So best way is to check maybe Glassdoor rating or Kulu here that we have in Germany and and reach out to people to see what their feedback is regarding like work-life balance and flexibility in the corporate life and the corporate job that they have in the company. Um, One question that we have just now that popped up mainly for RS and Taya is for from international students perspective living in a different country, how, do you deal with visa, like work visa and things like that? And is it necessary for you to speak the language of the country that you're applying to? Uh, RS, you want to start? Yeah, sure. Uh, let's take the, the Irish example here. So for example, for the visa part, uh, students that conducted master studies here, they are, it's super easy to apply for Stamp 1G visa. That's the one you need, and this visa allows you to stay and work in the country for two years after your master studies. So that's what I'm currently using, and that's what helped me to to get the job. I believe in every country, especially in Europe, as there are some programs like that. So uh, the best way is to check with your university. They always help train students, the global offices there, and they have all the necessary information for your application and what what and when it needs to be done because there are also deadlines when you can apply for for that sort of visa and for the language part it's it's definitely helpful it also depends what role you are doing and with whom are you going to be speaking on your job Uh, but here in ireland the, the english is mainly used so i believe the most international students won't have problems with that um, and yeah, and as I'm working with people from United Kingdom and Ireland, I'm also using English every day for my job. So it's a must for me um, on, on, on that side. Yeah, maybe I can add um, also regarding Germany. Uh, so if you're already in the country, most likely you are on a cer- certain type of visa here, either student visa and uh, Germany also has the same as Ireland program after you graduated in Germany. Um, you have um, some visa to st- type of visa to stay here and look for a job. Um, so I would just recommend when you're interviewing with a company to ask the recruiter if that company supports um, visa sponsorship. Uh, we do provide uh, visa sponsorship for some roles in Germany, for some roles like for other roles, let's say in, in the United Kingdom or Ireland. It depends on the position, it depends on uh, the situation. Um, But if the person is already in the country and um, it's just the matter of changing um, one visa to another visa, there is no problem with that. And also, to be honest, in my experience, I took like always that in my hands and it's not such a difficult task to change your visa yourself in Germany. It's like you go on the website, you understand what uh, the package of documents is you can deal with it yourself, but some companies are really helpful and provide the service for you, but you can do also um, do it yourself. But please clarify it in the beginning because sometimes, um, yeah, it could be an obstacle and no one wants <laughs> negative surprises in the end. Um, yeah, do your own research. Um, don't rely only on the employer. And regarding the language in Germany, you 
don't have to speak the German language to for a work visa, but if you want to stay long term and like, for example, for residence permit type of visas, um, you would need a certain level of German ability, like language abilities. Yeah, and I think it also depends on the department and the market that they're working in. Like, for example, if they're working specifically for DAG market, then they have to speak German. But if they're like uh, technical roles that you're only like coding or like product management kind of roles, I don't think uh, German language is that necessary there because it based, it's based on the company, what their company language is. Like for HubSpot, we speak English. So uh, English is the main uh, language that we usually look for. Like fluency in English is the uh, main key point that we look for in applications for sure. So thanks guys for sharing that in your own personal experience. So uh, we are coming close to the end uh, of the fireside chat. So any extra advice that you have uh, for the students listening in and for those that maybe check in on this video later. Uh, Connor, you want to start? Uh, yeah, I think um, just as we kind of said before, just keep an open mind. Um, just kind of try and take as many positive steps forward and regardless of what you're looking into doing. Um, I think if... Hope spot is somewhere you're considering. I think you're going in a really, really good direction. Um, I think just check out a lot of the um, the hope spot processes and like the the, the star method, the heart method, um, because I think it would really help you in an application pro um, process. But I think as well it would give you a good idea of what hope spot's actually about. I pass you over to Ors. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Connor. So. Um... Advice from me for, for students that are looking to apply uh, for, for a role at HubSpot, definitely be to check out the culture code. So with that, you will definitely understand what are you getting into. I think you're going to like it because the culture code it is fantastic. It definitely works here. And everyone at HubSpot, they went through this process and they are hand-picked people that you know, bring the core values that company is looking for. So definitely check it out. There is a fantastic slide deck and it will definitely help with your interviews, especially with the behavioral questions and star, star method questions. But other than that, um, check out what you want to do. Check out what you like because the job is a big part of your life. So definitely understand that you will spend lots of time here so you better enjoy it so better better get into something that you're gonna like do your search and it will help you to to answer all these questions i believe yeah that, that's a very good advice um i would echo that and also say yeah do do your due pr preparation but don't get nervous and um yeah you've done your best and you brought in your interest your research and that's um yeah, uh, that's what you, um, yeah, do your best. And if you fail, don't uh, treat it as like a big failure. Just learn from it. Always ask for feedback. Uh, you can get feedback and it will be useful for you or um, yeah, just uh, use it for your next time. Um, and uh, yeah, don't worry too much about it. If you read any famous person's story, they all had a lot of like turbulations and sometimes they failed, sometimes they succeeded. Just, yeah, it's part of the journey. Definitely great tips, guys. Thank you very much for that. And thanks everyone for joining in. I hope this session for, was helpful for you. Thank you to our lovely panelists for sharing their background and their tips and tricks as well. Uh, follow us here on HubSpot Live if you want to join in to more fireside chats like this and follow up on more fireside chats like this. Uh, we have a LinkedIn page called Student Spot where you can see what our interns are up to and what it's like working at HubSpot as well uh, and to get quick tips and tricks regarding uh, your career and advices on that as well. So we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone.